from the News Channel 5 Network. This is KFASA Nashville. Okay. Bienvenidos, and welcome to Que Pasa Nashville. I enjoy seeing you each week as we talk about the opportunities and challenges Latinos bring to Middle Tennessee. I'm excited to um, have my friend, Ana Escobar, our new, um, who just won the primary for the General Sessions Judge at District 3, correct? Correct. But you are on the ballot unopposed for the August 2nd election. Correct. Um, congratulations, I well, guess. thank you. With no opponent, thank you know, you. there's most, pretty much an uh, opportunity for a shoe-in, is that correct? I hope so. <laughs> At this point. Yes, so. yes. This was a really um, big election. It was, you it was. were really out there with, um, um, recently with being, uh, someone else being appointed, um, that the uh, Metro Council appointed versus mm -hmm. your Maybe the, the support was he had all the um, experience to be in this judgeship. But tell me exactly, what is a general sessions judge? So a general sessions judge hears a variety of uh, types of cases, and it's the first experience that a lot of our citizens will get when they come to court. So they hear traffic tickets, they go to the mental health hospital um, to hear cases about competency and whether somebody is too mentally ill to be, you know, out in the so community. So this is really the first time mm -hmm. in front of a judge. Exactly. Exactly. Okay. exactly. And so um, there are civil lawsuits under $25,000. Um, there are criminal cases. Um, and that, in general sessions, felonies start out at that level. Um, and then you can't plead guilty or innocent to a felony um, in general sessions, but there are hearings okay. that kind of get the case on track. And then there are misdemeanors. And so how many judges fall into this category? So there are 11 judges in Davidson County, and normally the term is eight years, but we had a special election um, May 1st because Judge Dalton, who had the position in Division Three, moved up to criminal court in Division Two. Okay. So a, va a vacancy was created. But the vacancy was appointed um, to um, another person, and then that opened up for the election of a primary, is that correct? Correct. When that term became available with Judge Dalton? Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, um, and so when it look, looks about your background, tell us a little bit what prepared you to be able to be considered and run for this position. Well, I've been a lawyer for almost 23 years. In October, it'll be 23 years. Um, my first job was as a public defender, and public defenders represent indigent clients um, here in Nashville. So if you can't afford an attorney, you are um, appointed a, de a public defender. And a public defender, what percentage do you think, I know this is not an exact mm -hmm. statistic, of people who take public defenders in all these misdemeanor or general mm -hmm. session judge uh, cases? Um, a great number of people take public defenders or the court can appoint a uh, private lawyer okay. um, to represent them. So a great number of people do seek help um, from the court in getting an attorney. Um, so as a public mm -hmm. defender, you were representing all these type of cases yes. no matter what yes. came through. And Correct. Stuff. Correct. Um, so yes, you you get the appointment, and you really don't have a choice as to who's appointed to you or what type of case there is as a public defender. Um, and I've been a district attorney twice. I was in private pr uh, practice for ten years as a defense attorney. Um, I've also been metro clerk for two yes. years, and I also worked at the administrative office of the courts, and that is the uh, state office that manages the judicial system here in Tennessee. So you understand not only as representing a client and the different um, uh, violations they that mm -hmm. uh, uh, a defendant has. Yes. But you understand how the system works and all the eleven judges and who does what and how resources for your clients that you represent or resources within the community that as a judge you can refer them to or understand where there's help. Not necessarily that jail's the only answer. Correct. Okay. And that I think yes. is what's key here is mm -hmm. um, as we look at our jails and, and incarceration of smaller and like I said I'm not an expert right. in this field but what are other options especially with mental health in exactly. needs of um, some of these people domestic violence and mm -hmm. that was a huge huge uh, component of your election of your knowledge of a domestic violence or domestic violence organizations that yes. supported you kind of tell me and talk to me about that yes yeah, so this judgeship hears domestic violence cases eight months out of the year and so for three Why years um, well you need a break honestly okay, okay. Um, it can be pretty intense okay um, so you do four months with domestic violence cases with um, people accused of domestic violence on bond. Okay. Then you do four months with people accused of domestic violence who are in jail. Okay. And then you do four months of a okay. regular rotation. And okay. that's kind of to 
it's almost self-care, honestly. Um, so, um, so for three years, I was the team leader for the domestic violence unit at the DA's office. So I literally have spoken to hundreds of victims and heard their stories and really got to understand the complexity of domestic violence. You know, the domestic violence law in Tennessee is defined as um, people that you're in an intimate relationship with, family members and roommates. So that can encompass a great variety of situations. For instance, sometimes adult children with mental health issues live with, an, with their parents and sometimes they get off their medication and they push mom or dad. Mom and dad call the police trying to get some help in that moment and the next thing you know the adult child with the mental health issue is taken to jail. So that kind of situation requires some different types of resolution than somebody who's being stalked or um, physically abused. So let's let's kind of focus in on domestic violence mm -hmm. since that's one of the strong areas that you will oversee, but also with your experience, mm -hmm. but also with the, um, and I don't have the top of my head, but the data known for the state of Tennessee, where we rank really high in domestic violence, domestic homicide, partner mm -hmm. homicide, you know, spousal, you know, is in your work, is there a common thread? Is it upbringing? Is it understanding um, respect? I mean, mm -hmm. where do you see this as a judge to understand where this domestic violence is at what level? Because that's what you're going to have to see and, and, and um, from your experience, mm -hmm. understand do they need this or jail or what? Is right. that correct? So it is. Honestly, that's what fascinates me about this because there is really not one solution. Um, unfortunately, last year we had a number of homicides where it was a uh, murder-suicide mm -hmm. and some of these people had never called um, the police and some of the people who committed the murder-suicide had never been arrested. Um, and frankly, it, it ranges from all economic levels all um, religions, cultures, um, so there isn't one magic solution. Um, and that's, to me, what's intriguing, is trying to figure things out and trying to create a solution for you know individual relationships. So in this judgeship, mm -hmm. that's what you're gonna be faced with? Yes. A, major, a, a large portion of your cases? Yes. Um, and so another question I have, how does social media which is very dominant in tracking, mm -hmm. stalking, you know, those laws continue to change as our social media is so prevalent in relationships. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, how do you see that as a judge or a mm -hmm. prosecutor or a defender? Um, what role is social media playing in, in terms of um, domestic violence? Well, um, in 2016, I'm proud to say I was on the YWCA board for six years. And in 2016, we actually, um, presented a law that would update the harassment code. Um, before 2016, if you called someone repetitively in an annoying, repetitive manner, um, that was harassment. Well, you know nobody calls anymore. People text, they do things on social media. So we were Instagram, able- Instagram, following Exactly. So we were able to change the law to include social media and texting. So that was a big win. But our laws do need to be updated for um, the changes that are happening in communication. But it's unfortunate. We see so many people um, where fights happen because of something they saw on social media. Um, we see so many um, instances where people harass people through social media and people have started taping incidents um, oh through gosh. their phones and the text messages that go back and, and forth that's from all, that. That's all mm -hmm. evidence. Exactly. It um, is. And I, you know, I, I have three teenage daughters mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that is something I have to be aware of right. for them to be um, understanding what their role is in social media, but um, their friends, their postings, right. um, boyfriends. I mm -hmm. mean, that is something, it's a whole new world for me as a parent right. to understand their role in a relationship and or um, uh, even other relationships, mm -hmm. how they play a role with their friends' relationships yes. and who they tell and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I find that at a young age, it is the biggest weapon they have and they don't it realize so it. It is so true. And it is so. so true. And unfortunately, people get angry, like I said, when they see things that have been posted or realize that a lot. So the know, innocence of some right. of these messaging. And yeah. so as a judge, you are able, your role is to filter out to what degree um, 
I would assume, and yes. what's the punishment? Correct. And and I think that's a big one is that what is that punishment? Mm -hmm. And so you have choices as a judge? Yes. And so a lot, of, you know, the goal of, of the domestic violence delivery system right now is for people to have healthy and safe relationships. Correct. And we don't want to make it more difficult for a victim of domestic violence to leave. So sometimes we need to look for alternatives other than jail, especially if the person wants to stay with that person. Um, so there are batter's intervention programs, there are programs to help someone if they need um, addiction treatment, um, mental health treatment. So there are a variety of things that can happen. And as a judge, how do you how are you become aware of all the different entities? Yes, you have the big, mm -hmm. um, the YW, you have um, different, you have the power, mm -hmm. different nonprofits. How are you c continually aware of the organizations? Honestly, that's what I'm looking forward to the most is, is getting together with the probation department and figuring out all the different ways of treating people with these kind of batter tendencies and all the options that are in Nashville. Um, I'm looking forward to that. Well, we're mm -hmm. going to take a quick break, okay. and we're going to be right back with Anna, Anna Escobar, who's the new General Sessions Judge, Division Three, that will be on the ballot on August 2nd, with no opponent. So we'll be right back and continue talking with her.